Hello to all. Uh, myself Dr. Pradeep Ingle. I am a consultant gynecologist at Snehadeep Super Speciality Gyne Care, Ramban Nagar, Maharashtra, India. Today uh, we will be discussing a case of rudimentary horn ectopic pregnancy. As we all know, rudimentary horn ectopic pregnancies are very rare and the incidence quoted in literature it is around 1 in 75,000 to 1 in 1 lakh pregnancies. Unicornate uterus may have a communicating or a non-communicating horn. How pregnancy forms and grows inside the rudimentary non-communicating horn is still not known. Now two theories have been proposed for the same. First theory is transperitoneal migration of sperms. It states that the sperms from the communicating tube to the non-communicating tube they traverse and they subsequently fertilize an egg from the ovary which is near to the non-communicating tube. Now this transperitoneal migration is seen and it is claimed to be present in around 50% of the cases of rudimentary horn ectopic pregnancies. Now the second theory was proposed by Lato and Norman in 1950. It states that microscopic channels they exist between endometrial and rudimentary horn cavity and sperms migrate through these channels into the non-communicating horn to fertilize an ipsilateral egg. Now, rudimentary horn ectopic can be mistaken for ovarian ectopic at it being very close to the ovary. Now, there are very few there are few points which will able to which will help us to differentiate between in these two entities. Now, two separate uteri are seen in rudimentary horn ectopic pregnancy there is absence of continuity between this rudimentary horn and the cervix and there is presence of myometrial tissue surrounding the ectopic and fourth thing is there is presence of separate ovarian tissue away from the ectopic sac now the treatment for this thing is conservative management with methotrexate has been described but it poses the risk of failure and the recurrence thus excision of rudimentary horn is the treatment of choice. So surgical treatment is the treatment of choice. Now we here we describe a case. She is a 22 year old lady. She is G2P1L1 with previous one normal delivery. She came with history of 9 weeks amenorrhea for a routine antenatal checkup and on a sonography we could diagnose live right rudimentary horn ectopic pregnancy of 8.4 weeks so here you will be able to see the live baby of around 8.4 weeks is seen and this is a um, uh, no, uterus which is communicating with the cervix. The uterus is empty and it is showing the pseudo residual reaction and there is a presence of cardiac activity in this ectopic gestational sac. Now we will see the video of uh, how this ectopic pregnancy was diagnosed on a sonography. Now here we will see this is the ectopic sac and the uterus is besides this ectopic sac. So this is a uterus and this is a non-communicating horn containing this live ectopic pregnancy. Now a good decidual reaction is seen, a rim of myometrium is seen. So, uh, it is a point of differentiation between ovarian ectopic and rudimentary horn ectopic. Now we will go to the surgery how we manage this case. This case was um, posted for laparoscopy and uh, uh, managed laparoscopically. Now this was a primary view. Primary view was suggestive of a rudimentary non-communicating uh, right ectopic pregnancy. Now this is a communicating uterus, this is communicating tube and this is non-communicating horn with non-communicating tube. We could see uh, <coughs> ovaries on both the sides. Now the surgery is straightforward, simple. This horn is supplied mainly by uh, uh, two sources. One is infundibular pelvic ligament and other is uh, there are few branches which arise from the uterine ligament uterine sorry uterine artery now in all such cases we should be ureter wise as we all know mullerian anomalies they are associated with the renal anomalies 
So, uh, course of the ureter is really related. Now, we are coagulating the infant pelvic ligament. We are using a bipolar shearer here. This is a good instrument. We are giving short bursts of current so as to coagulate the vessel. We are going step by step. Short bursts of current, current are applied. And till the point we go to the broad ligament, layer by layer, step by step, coagulation and cutting is performed with the bipolar shearer. Now, as we uh, would uh, be able to see, now here we are opening into the broad ligament. Now, here we go layer by layer so as to avoid bleeding. Layer by layer dissection is done, anteriorly the broad ligament is opened. Then few vessels which are arising from this broad ligament were identified and coagulated individually. Traction is very important. Traction would help us to identify the tissues and tissue planes. Now the medial side of the uh, ectopic, it is coagulated. Now the stump is quite thick. So we are using bipolar uh, current here, bipolar forceps, step by step we are coagulating, short bursts of current are given and again shear are used to separate this rudimentary horn from the main uterus. Now assistant is giving constant traction so as to safeguard the excision as the bladder margins are very close assistant is pulling now we are into a correct plane when we go into a correct plane there will be less bleeding and as you can see this is a stump which is arising from the uterine artery which is coagulated now this stump will separate from the main uterus this rudimentary horn is excised. The next step is the hemostasis is confirmed, course of the ureter is seen. There is no bleeding, opposite side tube and ovary is normal. For additional safety, the stump is again coagulated with bipolar forceps. Again, the traction is given so as to have a very good grip with bipolar. Coagulation is done till the bubble subside. Uterine artery stump is again coagulated. Hemostasis is checked, there is no bleeding. I will move on to the Next step, the patient was having bleeding and the blood was aspirated. Now the ovary has lost its medial attachment, so the ovary was suspended. Layer by layer, broad ligament is included inside the suturing. And this suture is tied to the ipsilateral round ligament, so as to safeguard and secure the ovary and it will allow us to fix the ovary to the ipsilateral round ligament. It will decrease the chance of torsion. Now this thing will undergo a fibrosis and the ovary will be fixed. Ipsilateral tube is also removed. The suture is taken with number one micro. Micril will be absorbed in the next six weeks till the point in time the fibrosis will occur. Needle was removed from the port. The horn was morcellated with electric power morcellator. You can see the amount of vascularity this horn is having. 
Now decidual tissue is coming out. You can notice the placenta. This was liker. You may see this tiny baby around nine weaker fetus. And this was a final view. Hemostasis is confirmed. Medial side, lateral side, suspended ovary. And any amount of blood was sucked out. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hope it would have added into your knowledge. Thank you.